And, and I was kind of thinking that tough times brought people together. That you know, when you didn't have money, that you, we we just kind of uh, pooled our resources, got together, and uh, what is it that that concept is? Misery loves company. So you know, when times are tough, let's just um, we can live on love instead. It turns out that's not exactly the case. Uh, Helen Chen from uh, Los Angeles is an international speaker, best-selling author, and business consultant, and an authority on the subject of relationships, and she has some amazing insights and information on how people respond to these kinds of economic conditions. She is the author of The Matchmaker of the Century, and it's a pleasure to have you, Helen, on The David Wilson Show. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm great. I, I had, <laughs> Wonderful. I, I had it all wrong, though. <laughs> Not necessary. Tell me about it. Well, no, I had it all wrong. I thought, you know what, it, it's tough times. It's, you know, as long as we're miserable, we might as well be together. Oh, well, that's a really good idea, though. Why not? <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but apparently that's not what's happening. Well, people try to postpone because they're not sure, but actually still your idea was right. Together is better than not together, right? Oh, I see. So <laughs> it's not what people are doing, but I got the right idea. Yes, you so, got it right. So I could do what you're doing. Yeah, that's there, very nice. Because, of, because when you have a home to go back and you have somebody to love you, you know, this economy suffer can decrease. Oh, gosh. I just want to play some beautiful music now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your book, The Matchmaker of the Century. This book's doing very well. Ah, oh, thank you. So at number one best-selling book in love and romance and relationships and marriage and self-help and self-improvement and in parenting and family? Seriously? Yeah, because they talk about the real stuff. So how did you become the ultimate matchmaker? Well, basically, the idea is I mind people's business, and then I really, really like this subject called romance. And I'm thinking that is what the men and women, when they live around the world, that was the highest pleasure, one of the pleasure people are looking for. So that's the most beautiful things and worth to take care about it. Oh, so, so it's, the, it's the number one thing that people are interested in, isn't it? Because, I mean, wars have been fought over romance, right? Yeah, you see, I mean, especially for me, I don't know about you, but you see, when we go to listen to the music, when we see the musical, when we see the advertisement, people talking about love and family all the time, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You don't hear a lot of songs written about fixing your car. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a song about going to the dentist. <laughs> I go to making money. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so there are a few songs about making money. Right. But when it, but but yeah, it's always about love and romance See? and yes. And then people really sing about having their heart ripped out, don't they? Yeah. That's why in my book I'm talking about you should date only after you marry, not before you marry. You should wait, wait a second. <laughs> What does that mean? You should, date, right. you should date only after you're married. It's the best. Because what happens if you date before you marry, only you get about 95% you have broken. That's what you get. Okay. So, so, you, so you find a, a man or a woman or a partner or whatever that uh, suits you. You ask them to marry you. And then it, once they say yes, you say, and now would you like to date? <laughs> then you marry. Then you date the rest of your life. That's the idea. Okay. <laughs> well, do, do do not enough people today who are married date? I mean, it seems like once you get married, then all the fun stops. And the reason for that is because they're doing the wrong way, because they date before they marry. So they already spend all their romance. They're already taking care of other people's wives, and then they already spend all their money. They already buy the wrong stuff, and then they already broken their heart. Then they marry, and that's what's the problem. Okay, well, let, let's talk about what's really going on in America today, you cite some uh, interesting uh, research, a Pew study that's found that one in five young adults between 18 and 34 have delayed having a kid because of the economic slowdown. Well, basically, it's not because the slowdown. It's because their fear. They're not certain about, you know, this is the right people. And then they try to postpone. And then they're scared about they don't have money for the future. But that's just mentality, the thinking. It's not really the real reality. Are they afraid that they won't have the money to have children, 
or are they afraid that times are too tough and the relationship's not going to last? Right, because they have a lot of bad experience, and that's what happened. Because they date so many times already, and then they have a bad experience, and then they see, you know, some people not making it, and then they see that the, you know, future is very dangerous. They're thinking about, well, you know, they probably don't make it themselves. But then actually, the two people, one plus one is better than two. So it should be working together is still better than you fighting alone. Now, since 2008, which is, uh, I guess, uh, 2008 to 2012, we're talking about just uh, four years Mm -hmm. now, we have reached a 12-year low in births. Mm -hmm. Yes. And And the birth rate is continuing to fall. Right. Is, is that because people are just becoming more self-centered and don't want to have kids? Or is it the same fear that they're afraid that, you know, they can't afford kids or the relationship isn't going to last? What's causing that? The basic reason is because the, the whole big environment and then the financial situation and then the people get into the mood of their worry and then they fear. It's not they really don't know if they have a baby what they're going to feel. They didn't know, but then they even not dare to try because they're thinking the future, you know, the, the finance and then the whole thing, it's like people are not going to make money anymore. But still, it's not because you're poor so your relationship have to be broken. You see, it's not because you're poor your children will not grow up. It's it's because you worry, and then you try to postpone. So you got nothing. So people say, okay, maybe wait for tomorrow. Maybe wait for next year. We see. Maybe we have a better situation, then we have a baby. Because they want a security, security, security. But actually, the security is in your heart. Security not because the society give it to you. Still so many people make it who dare to really pregnant. But there's some people just even postpone and postpone and postpone. So they become 40, they become 45, and then they become more difficult to really have a baby and have a family. And then things just become and tough. Then, and, then, and then they can't have children at all. Yeah, then they lost the whole game because I'm, they're number, never 18 again. I'm waiting until I turn 70. <laughs> and then that's finish. Then I'm going to have kids. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> I, I won't have to care for them for very long. Yeah, it's too much worry. That's, it's, it's, people have a lot of bad experience, and then they have a, so much worry. And then people talk to people about, you know, we should worry. And it's contagious. So people scare, scare, scare. And then they're making the bad move. So it's more difficult to pregnant and more worry. And then people thinking about postpone is the best way to choose for now. And that is really a trap. But here's an interesting thing that I'm hearing a lot about, and it's the, the, the these medical firms that deal in in vitro fertilization, that sort of thing. Those really seem to be growing and growing and growing. And I think it's because more and more people who are getting up there in age where it's a little more difficult to have a child are deciding that they want to have one. And so now they need medical assistance to do that. Am I right, right about that? They just, yeah, they just yeah. postponed it yes, that long? because I married so many couples, and then now they have a problem with a baby. And one of the reasons is because they try to make finance go right. So they don't sleep, you see? They just say, oh, I'm going to work, I'm going to work. So nobody sleep. And then what happens is they really cannot pregnant because the body and health start become dangerous in their life. They become not sleeping. That was very easy things. You know, they're just not, not, not eating well, and then they don't sleep because they want to fight for the finance. So everybody try to making money. The woman try to making money. The men try to making money. So nobody really take care of the time to even sleep. And then they're making the, the pregnant rate to become lower. You know, that's what doctors say, because I research this almost daily. You, you know, uh, what's interesting about this whole conundrum here is the idea that people will put off having a child they'll put off having a child for you know maybe 10 years and then and then suddenly they decide that they want to have children and the reason that they put off having the kids is because they're trying to save money and now they're going to pay some doctor 50,000 bucks to get them pregnant yeah very very wrong thing and also what they want to have is they want to have the bed first they want to have a house first they want to have a car first but i think well you, you do you do a- you do need the bed first <laughs> Well, I'm not. talking about the baby bed. I'm oh, the not talking baby about your bed. bed. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little confused there. <laughs> <laughs> they want to buy the very expensive baby bed. I mean, that's not really necessary. Put them in a the box. You know, they'll grow up. And then in the meantime, you go to making money. It will still make it. I, you know what? You give me a great idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a, a, a childbirth clinic called Do It Now. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
save yourself. I'm only going to charge a thousand bucks, and then the couple will come sit down and they'll talk to me, and I'll say, you know what? Don't put it off now because here's how much it's going to cost you later on. <laughs> There's probably other uh, expenses associated with having kids later in life too. Right, but then the thing is that when you have, you could deal with, and when you have nothing, you only imagination, and then the imagination actually scare you away. When you have a job, you could fight for it. When you have a no job, you sit at home and thinking about you're going to have a job and what's going to happen. It's not really real. So if we pregnant, and then we have a baby, and then we will go over, and then we will have a, deliver the baby, and then we were thinking the way, and then life will get going. It's just the real life. You see, you go 20, you go 30, yeah. but you cannot sit there and wait for the bed and wait for the house and then then, then by the time just you say 50 then you cannot pregnant my guest is helen chen she is the author of the matchmaker of the century you can find her book uh, among other places at barnes and noble it's a bestseller and, and so what you're saying helen is that uh, just get with it have the kid and that's gonna force you to get with the rest of the program well, if you talk about force, that word to scare people away. I'm but then sorry, the thing but, is, you know, but... you're going to have energy because you love, because of a family, because of a responsibility, and you have a people encourage you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, folks. Just get with it. It's going to be a cool night tonight. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Good. Get with it and, uh, you know, stop waiting. It's not, you know, besides, it may not get any better. Yeah, if you're alone, I mean, you have also the problem, and you're also lonely, and then you're wasting your time. And you have a two, yes, you have a problem, and maybe sometimes you fight, but still you have somebody to fight for, and that was even better. Okay, all right, so it's, a, <laughs> it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting idea and philosophy, and how's that working out for you? Uh, are you, are you? You're doing a lot of seminars and things, are people responding to that message? Yes, you know, as I have the St. Gabriel said, like a December 8th, you know, I have a seminar to teaching people how to really have a relationship and I'm matchmaking for people. And then I just want them to have a the baby and then marry and face the real life and enjoy the romance. Do, let me ask you this final question. Do, do parents have, well, let's put it this way. Do adults who have children make better employees than single adults? Yeah, not only making the better uh, job, and then they're making more income. This is a real statistic. They're making more money, doesn't matter wife or husband, man or woman. They do making more money, and then they are better employee, and then they're more thoughtful executive. Okay. And besides, you know, if, you, if you've got a kid, you, know, you need to make more money, or Junior's going to be eating hamburger helper. <laughs> That's the way it's that's going to work. It's just much happier. Helen Chen, it's a pleasure talking to you. Tell us where we can find the book. I know we can find it at Barnes & Noble. Most bookstores? Yes, 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 definitely. And the, the book is called The Matchmaker of the Century. And among other things, what will it tell us? Well, we, you can see my website, thematchmakerofthecentury.com. And then basically I want to let you know, you know, if you fall in love, you're healthier, and then you have more freedom after you marry. That is the truth. <laughs> unless it's unless you're in an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> you see, when you marry, you have a more tough feeling. You have a more responsibility, and you're stronger, and you actually have more energy to produce. You have a home to go back to, and that is very important for men and women. All right. It looks like I need to be looking out for my health. <laughs> Good All for right. you. Helen Chen, it's a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Matchmaker of the Century is the book. Helen Chen is the author. Some very interesting ways of looking at love, romance, and the economy. Hey, hey, thanks for being on the David Wilson Show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. And-